A 14-year-old boy stands charged as an adult with the murder of a Battle Creek Central High School senior. A 13-year-old boy also faces a murder charge for the deadly shooting just one week ago. News Channel 3's Autumn Pitcher joins us live from Calhoun County District Court where the second suspect made his first court appearance just a few hours ago. Autumn? Yes, 14-year-old Justice Chimner was charged with open murder today. However, he's pleading not guilty. Snyder was found dead, face down in the middle of Capitol in Battle Creek Avenue last Friday night. Today, Snyder's funeral was held at St. Philip's Catholic Church. In count three, it is alleged that you did while in the perpetration or attempted perpetration of a carjacking murder one Jack Snyder. The felony carries a maximum penalty of life without parole. You to life without parole, this please. That you could serve the rest of your life in prison. Chimner was taken into custody last Sunday around 2 a.m. when Battle Creek police found him in a car parked in the area of Jackson Street and Bedford Road. Snyder was on his way home from his girlfriend's birthday party when the incident happened, offering to give Chimner and a 13 year old boy a ride due to the cold temperatures, according to police. When the two got in, they tried carjacking Snyder. It is alleged that you did have or carry a handgun at the time you either attempted to commit or that you did commit the carjacking. Do you understand that allegation? Yes, Snyder resisted the carjacking, resulting in him being shot twice. Chimner's attorney asked for bond, but prosecutor David Gilbert disagreed, arguing Chimner has a criminal history. The probation officer noted that they had tried uh, some at point, they tried to wrap around, but he continued his delinquent behaviors. At the time, the uh, probation officer thought that he was uh, a danger to our community. He had actually stolen his godmother's uh, a gun from his godmother's lockbox in an attempt to sell it. In August of last year, he was released from a juvenile home and placed on Tether. And he continually violated Tether, so Tether won't work for him either. The only thing I can see is to keep keeping him locked up for the safety of the community. After reviewing probable cause documents, Magistrate Straub denied bond. Now his next hearing is scheduled to be on March 13th. The 13-year-old boy was arraigned on two different charges on Tuesday, and those included open murder and carjacking. And of course, as we get the latest details on this case, we'll continue to update you both on air and online. We can ask for better weather for those participating in the 11th annual Winter Blast race in Portage today. The race starting in just minutes. News Channel 3's Jessica Hartford joins us live from the start. Jessica, we're so proud of you. For those who are, you know, maybe have to work or are still in bed, give us a, a little, little sneak peek into what's going on out there. Is that your daughter there with you? Yes, Allie, absolutely. This is my oldest daughter, Lily. She just turned 13, and she's a great runner. And so I'm so excited that this is becoming kind of a family tradition. We sign up for 5Ks, we run together as a family, and then we just, oh. <laughs> But today, it's a great day to run. You know, it is 30 degrees outside, but the sun is shining, the roads are clear. And I was just talking to event organizers. They say that this year is bigger and better than, la than years past. 600 people have signed up to run this morning. Just two minutes ago, Allie, you it, but we had about 50 half marathon runners taking off. That's 13.1 miles. Now I'm not going that far today. I'm just going to do the 10K, which is about 6.2 miles. And then my daughter and my husband, Steve, they're going to do the 5K. So that's 3.2 miles. But, you know, we're just going to take it one step at a time. Just well, you guys rock. Tell us a little bit. I believe you're running for a cause today. Can you give us some insight into that also? Sure. So there are several organizations that this winter blast race is supporting and um, a lot of run camp participants are also here. So there's another marathon happening coming up in April, which is the Ziegler Kalamazoo Marathon. And so we're all supporting, you know, the running community all comes out and supports all these races and um, the money will go right back into the community. And it's just great for our overall health and for families. And um, it kind of just sends a message that it's the middle of winter, but we're here to help you. Oh, I love it. Well, you guys know we're cheering for you. And you told me earlier this week um, that you think you can do this in about an hour. So we're going to try to squeeze you in before show and see if you did it. So we're rooting for you guys. Good luck today. All right. I'll be uh, I'll be looking for you to take a look at this blue hat here with the Channel 3 logo. I'll be zooming across the finish line here, hopefully within the last hour. So, all right. We'll see you guys later. Bye, Keith. Good luck. Bye, Ali. Railroad plays a major role in our nation's history.
taking slaves to places of safety. And Cass County is home to a small but important piece of that history, one in need of repairs. Here's WSBT 22's Lynette Grant. Brownsville School was a one room schoolhouse built in the early 1840s. It was integrated from the day it opened until it closed in 1957, making it one of the longest integrated public schools in Michigan. The inside of this nearly 1100 square foot school no longer sits students today, but instead a big piece of history. History dating back nearly 180 years. A lot of the elements that the construction materials that were used at the time can kind of help date a building. For instance, the square headed what they call cut nails, they're uh, square steel cut nails. Brownsville School in Calvin Township is one for the history books. For more than 100 years, even before the Civil War, black and white students attended school together in a one-room schoolhouse. The school and property were purchased in November for restoration. Our goal is to keep it as much as the original as it can, as it can be done. The Underground Railroad Society of Cass County restores buildings countywide. According to historical documents, in Calvin, Penn, and Porter Townships, more than 15,000 fugitive slaves, now called freedom seekers, were helped on their way to Canada. Some settled in this area for good and attended the school. Say your great-great-grandmother and that went to this, one of the schools, and you have a photograph of that. We would love to put that on display at the Brownsville School. The restoration project is expected to last a while and could cost more than a million dollars, but it's a project that the society president believes needs to happen. You know, you can read things in books and, uh, and that's great. You can look at plaques, but when you, can, when you walk into a building, it gives you a real sense of what it was like 150, 170 years ago. This schoolhouse is just one of several historic sites across Cass County. The Underground Railroad Society has a driving tour showcasing those sites. We'll put a link to those in this story on our website, WSBT.com.